Hi, my name is William Mack, and today on Ask an FAE, we're going to be discussing the life of an aluminum electrolytic capacitor. I have with me Sam McCardo. He is a Hemet field application engineer, and he'll be answering the commonly asked question, can you tell us why it is important to calculate the life of an electrolytic capacitor? Sure thing. Um, aluminum electrolytic capacitors are commonly used in power and industrial applications where efficiency and bulk capacitance are accurate and reliability is actually needed. Uh, the actual life of aluminum electrolytic capacitor is based on its operating conditions. Before we continue, can you tell us what exactly is end of life? Like what is considered end of yeah, life? Yeah, absolutely. Um, each manufacturer has its own definition of end of life. And at Kimmet, our end of life criteria are uh, number one, catastrophic failure, which is uh, either an open or a short circuit. Uh, the second is mechanical failure, which is where the operation vent, uh, the safety vent on the top of the capacitor uh, kind of blows and relieves the pressure in the can. And the final is the parametric failure. So uh, parametric failure comparison should be made between the manufacturers uh, using the same criteria. So Kimmet's parametric failure, parametric failure can be found in our series data sheets. Uh, for example, our ALS-70 aluminum electrolytic high CV capacitor, uh, we could take a look at the data sheet and see end of life on page two. Uh, the wording is a little bit confusing, but it shows that if one of the following conditions are no longer true, then the capacitor is considered end of life. So the first is uh, for caps with a rated voltage uh, between 25 and 100 volts DC, uh, and there should be less than or less than or equal to plus or minus 20% capacitance change. Uh, for capacitors with a rated voltage above 100 volts DC, uh, the capacitance should, change should be less than or equal to plus or minus 15%. For ESR, the ESR should be less than three times the initial limit. Additional end of life requirements uh, that also need to be taken into consideration are impedance. Uh, which we define as three times the initial limit, and leakage current, uh, which should always be less than the specified amount found in the data sheet. So now that we know what end of life means, can you tell us what factors really impact this? So the life is strongly dependent on three things, temperature, voltage, and ripple current. Can you tell me more about temperature then? Like how yeah, it affects it? Absolutely. Uh, the loss of electrolyte in the aluminum electrolytic capacitors is due to a chemical reaction within the capacitor. The speed is dependent on the temperature. Uh, so uh, the chemical reaction occurs at a speed which is consistent with the uh, Arrhenius law, uh, which basically states that with every 10 degree temperature uh, in Celsius mm -hmm. drop in temperature, uh, the life of the aluminum electrolytic capacitor will actually double. So um, if capacitors are operated at voltages below their rated voltage, uh, then the component will be under less operating stress. Uh, reduced stress and lower leakage current provides uh, an, improved, uh, an improvement in the life expectancy. Uh, since leakage, courage, leakage current increases with uh, temperature, the benefit of a uh, reduction in voltage um, is more pronounced at higher temperatures. So now that we know some factors that deal with um, lifetime of electrolytic and how it affects it, let's take a look at the ALS-70. And it also tells us operational lifetime. And what is this number that's actually reporting on the data sheet? Absolutely. The life in the loop of an aluminum electrolytic capacitor is pre-calculated with its data sheet. But the life is calculated at rated voltage, rated temperature, and at its maximum ripple current which are the maximum conditions given forth by the data sheet. Uh, by using the capacitor at or above its rated conditions, uh, you could either increase or decrease the expected lifetime of the aluminum electrolytic capacitor, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. Okay, now finally, how can we actually calculate this lifetime ourselves? The lifetime equals uh, the lifetime under maximum rated operating temperature multiplied by two multiplied by the allowable maximum temperature subtracted by the capacitor temperature on operation, and then all of that divided by 10. Or you could just use Kimmet's electrolytic life calculator, which can be found at engineeringcenter.com. Um, anyone could enter a Kimmet part number. They're all there. Um, and then you could enter the ambient temperature, operating voltage, ripple current, um, and then their operating frequencies at those ripple currents uh, to get all of the electrolytic life uh, expectancies out of that. 
Thank you for your explanation, Sam. You're welcome. For more information on calculating the life of an aluminum electrolytic cap, please feel free to reach out to your local Chemit FAE or submit your own questions, comments on a video, or post on any of our social media accounts with the hashtag ChemitAskFAE.